Hey friends, Tammy Humphreys here with your Thursday Daily Spiritual Check-In. This week, I had a conversation with someone who I loved very much, who was struggling because they were working really hard, trying to do the right things the right way, and weren't seeing the immediate benefits of that, and in the, which was okay, they were okay with that. The difficulty was, is they were seeing others who were doing things in a less than righteous way, we shall say. They were taking shortcuts and they were hurting people and yet still seemed to be prospering and getting some of the very things that this person wanted. And this person was getting discouraged. They were wondering out loud, uh, maybe, why they were even bothering trying to do the right thing, why they were trying to remain righteous when it wasn't paying off anyway. Maybe you've asked that question yourself. At the time, I, I didn't know a good reason other than it will pay off. I know it'll pay off. I trust that God will pay it off, and I trust that God will work in the other person's life as well. Um, but Later this week, um, I was reading in the book of Psalms, and I came across a psalm that addressed this question exactly. And even though I've read all the psalms before, I don't remember reading this psalm this way. And I thought I would share it with you today, because maybe it will bring you the same encouragement that it brought me and my loved one. It's Psalm 73, and I'm going to be sharing it with you here from the BibleGateway.com website. This is a great resource to use if you're wanting to read the Bible. It gives you different translations. Um, you can even uh, look at them side by side. But we're going to look at this from the New Living Translation. This is a Psalm of Asaph. He was a contemporary of David's. Listen in or read along. Truly God is good to Israel to those whose hearts are pure. But as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping and I was almost gone. He's saying here, you know, truly God is good to those who do the right things, but I almost lost my faith and got just derailed. Because, why? For I envied the proud when I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. Can you relate to that? They seem to live such painless lives. Their bodies are so healthy and strong. They don't have troubles like other people. They're not plagued with problems like everyone else. They wear pride like a jeweled necklace and clothe themselves with cruelty. These fat cats have everything their hearts could ever wish for. They scoff and speak only evil. And in their pride, they seek to crush others. They boast against the very heavens and their words strut throughout the earth. And so the people are dismayed and confused, drinking in all their words, believing what they say, hearing what they say. What does God know, they ask? Does the Most High even know what's happening? Look at these people enjoying a life of ease while their riches multiply. Do you know people like this? That no matter how much wrong they do, how much wickedness they engage in, how many people they hurt, how many uh, people that they talk about and um, make fun of or whatever, people seem to want to make them happy and give them more stuff and they, nothing seems to touch them. They seem to be okay. It caused this author to ask the question, Did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? In other words, did I do right for not? Like, is my right living not going to benefit me at all? Would I have just been better off doing whatever I felt like doing and grabbing what I wanted? Because I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. Can you relate to any of this? Then he goes on to say, and he kind of changes his tone a little bit. If I had really spoken this way to others, I would have been a traitor to your people. Remember, he's talking to God here. So he's saying, if I had verbalized these things out loud in public, 
I might have led some of your followers, Lord, astray. I might made made them question you just like I am. So rather than doing that, I tried to understand why the wicked prosper. But what a difficult task it is. He couldn't do it. And then another translation I said here says, Until I went into your sanctuary, O God. Then I went into your sanctuary and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. You see, when he sought God's presence, he remembered the destiny of the wicked. Because there really is two choices, or really are two choices in life. You can either seek to follow God, or you seek to follow the path to destruction. And eventually that path does open up. And then he, go, he says that. He goes on to say, Truly you put them on a slippery path and send them sliding over the cliff to destruction. In an instant they are destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. When you arise, O Lord, you will laugh at their silly ideas, as a person laughs at a dream, at dreams in the morning. He's saying, you know what? All the good things these wicked people, and maybe even not wicked people, maybe it's just people who aren't doing the right things but are still benefiting. Eventually, there's going to be a recompense. Eventually, there's going to be consequences because eventually... They're going to have to stand before a righteous God. The author goes on to say, Then I realized that my heart was bitter and I was all torn up inside. I was so foolish and ignorant. I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. You see here he's realizing the error of his ways. He's realizing that he's supposed to be a follower of God and by fussing about these things, God probably thought he was being a little silly, maybe. and But he says, even then, yet I still belong to you. You, God, hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My health may fail, my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Friends, he says it right here. When we are doing the right things to, and honoring God and living righteously, we are with God. We are in his will. We are walking in his plan. And even if things don't seem to be turning out the way we want them to, we know that God is still with us, holding our hands. His presence is with us in spite of the circumstances. Not only that, but we get to experience his presence for eternity, a glorious destiny. We are his forever. Those who desert him, who desert God, will perish for you destroy those who abandon you but as for me how good it is to be near god i have made the sovereign lord my shelter and i will tell everyone about the wonderful things you do so friends i hope this psalm encourages you to live righteously in spite of whatever circumstances that you may be experiencing, knowing that your Heavenly Father is with you. In spite of what may happen, all these circumstances are temporary. The good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. But God is with you, and you, you get to be with Him now and forever so tell others remind them your testimony could be the very thing that encourages someone else to stay on the path of righteousness god bless you we are in this together